Welcome back to that handicapping show. I'm Claire Novak, joined once again by Ellis Starr and Tom Lamara. We are here to talk about the Breeders' Cup Distaff, an exciting lineup for a wide open division. And really this race, we talk about all the Breeders' Cup races having championship implications. But right now you're going to need to see a horse run really well in here in order to secure some honors uh, at the Eclipse Awards. We've got some three-year-olds, we've got some older horses, and I would love to talk about the way you guys think this race is going to set up. Well, I'm starting with Got Lucky because the Spinster Stakes is a perfect prep. It's always a good prep for the distaff, but now particularly over the same track. And Got Lucky really proved herself in the Spinster. Um, she just ran very well on the race on Tappable, who she beat, is now out, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, Yahil was coming back, but Got Lucky is just really peaking as a four-year-old now with the 115 Echo Bay Speed Figures in two of her last three. And I think she's going to be really tough. I am going to throw in a long shot as I do in some of the other races here. And I'm going to put Frivolous in as my second pick because wow. under the angles of some other horses I'm using on the weekend, when she shows up, she runs big. And Nine Furlongs is where she really did it in the Fleur de Lis last year. Mm -hmm. She did it uh, in the Fall City Handicap, Fleur de Lis this year, Fall City Handicap last year, and she'll be a big price. And then I'm going to use Wedding Toast because there's really no knocking her record this year. All right, and Tom, as far as your distaff thoughts, uh, what do you think about the way the race is going to start? I think it's a pretty wide open race. There is speed in this race, but I have really been impressed with sheer drama mm. this summer. And I think she has, um, you know, has really hit her peak. Um, I like her running style. She can run on the lead. She can rate when she sprinted. She's come from far back. Not crazy about the outside post, but then again, at least she will be clear of some trouble if need be. I think if she's well positioned, I think she wins the distaff and maybe a championship. All right, and I'm taking a look at I'm a Chatterbox who comes off a nice cotillion win. And this is a filly who had some pretty bad racing luck earlier in the year. Uh, got disqualified in the CCA Oaks and Carolina got put up. Uh, I do think she's very talented. I like the way she's been training over the track. And like you said, Ellis, Wedding Toast is a horse that you just have to give respect to. She won the Belle Dame over Carolina and then the Ogden Phipps and also the Ruffian. So three in a row for her. She probably will go off the favorite, but just such a wide open field and so many different places you could look. We, uh, for our classic edition of the handicapping show, we talked about the three-year-olds running against the older horses. And you've got some three-year-olds in this race. Does it make a difference in your mind, three-year-old fillies running against older horses versus three-year-old colts, or is it kind of all the same? No, I think the fillies are always more mature when they're this age of three. So I don't have a, as much of an issue with three-year-olds running in the Philly division against some of their older counterparts as I do with males. I really like to see the males stepping out, but mm -hmm. certainly the three-year-olds have proven themselves in top company. Well, Carolina was second in the Belle Dame last time out, and she is a horse out of all of Todd Pletcher's Breeders' Cup runners. He has made a point of saying how much she likes the track here, how well she's been training. She's really perked up with the colder weather, and I do uh, forgive her for her first try against Elders running second to Wedding Toast. I think she has a good chance here. Tom, uh, thoughts on other horses in the field? I, you know what? I looked at the race. I think it's wide open underneath of sheer drama, <laughs> and I haven't gotten that far yet. All right. So. Well, maybe <laughs> if you get, uh, get a chance on Friday, tweet out your other thoughts on the other distaff right. horses, All and right. then you guys can follow Tom on Twitter to find out more about that. Let's move on to the sprint, which is one of the kind of flagship races this year when you have Run Happy, who, again, a three-year-old going against older horses, coming in here against Private Zone, who didn't get such a good draw in the, in the post position draw, but Run Happy is the winner of the King's Bishop who came here and won the, um, the Stoll Keenan Ogden oh, Phoenix. Phoenix. Yes, I got it all. And he will be running in the sprint against Private Zone, who, you know, forego winner, just an iron horse, the old, old type of contender who just grinds it out, super fast, brilliant type of racehorse. But can he overcome where he drew? Well, can he overcome the fact that both Run Happy and he both want the lead? I mean, when you look at horses that have ones across, I call it a picket fence, mm -hmm. and they have ones across on all their races, and I just don't see how they avoid each other. I really want to make a case for Run Happy because he was so impressive breaking 11th in the Phoenix as well as he did in the King's Bishop and then rallying up. But I went with another nice long shot in the field. Oh, nice. I went with 
I've won. I can never I've say. Won the, I, I've, I've I, won I, fallen over a lot. I've won <laughs> fallen over a lot. That's correct. I've I, been fallen over a lot. That's right. Because he reminded me of Work All Week. Okay. Work All Week was an Illinois bred who had a tremendous record coming in, 11 for 13 or 14, mm -hmm. kind of underrated. He won the Phoenix, of course, then went to California. Uh, Ivan Fallen of a Lot is 11 for 19 coming in. He's been doing his business, going about his business tremendously in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and he's got the figures that are improving on the right pattern. Calvin Burrell writes him very well. And I can't knock him at the price, so he's the one I'm putting on top because I do expect the pace meltdown. I got Wild Dude as my second pick because he's a horse that will just be coming on strongly as the pace setters get tired if Run Happy and Private Zone go as fast as I expect. And then I'm kind of tied between both of Jacobson's runners, Stall Walk and Dude and Saludos Amigos, who will mm. be coming running as well. Mm -hmm. Some good old names there from the New York circuit that we've been hearing a lot, getting their chance to run in the Breeders' Cup. Tom, what are your thoughts? Well. This is a stab race here, and you know, but, but having watched the Phoenix last, well, a few weeks ago, whenever it was, um, Mike Tomlinson, local trainer, has a horse in here called Barbados, mm. who actually ran an exceptional race, I thought. Um, he broke okay, dropped back, got shuffled, was last, made another move, couldn't catch Run Happy, but ran really well for second. That race was on a uh, wet track, and he also won at Keeneland before on a wet track, but he's run well on fast tracks. And um, I, I can see a horse coming from off the pace here, and um, I really liked his last race, 20 to 1. He's my top pick. All right, and I'm going to go with Sam Siegel's horse coming in from California, Masochistic, and that was the, is that how you say it? Masochistic. Masochistic. That's it, great. Well, you know, I don't really, okay. I don't need to deal with that very much at all in my <laughs> profession, so I don't know how to say it. Uh, this horse came in uh, fourth in the Santa Anita Sprint Championship last time out, so he is looking to rebound off of the loss there, but he had a really nice bullet out at Santa Anita, five furlongs October 25th, and I, I'm gonna take a chance with him just because I do agree with you guys with the pace meltdown and think you could see an upset in here. Let's move along to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Just really quick thoughts here. I'm gonna go ahead and run them down. Brody's Cause won uh, the Futurity here, did an excellent run. Trainer Dale Roman's super high on him. I love Dale Roman's to upset in a Breeders' Cup race. This horse is going to be better odds than an upset, but as far as winning in a Breeders' Cup race with a nice horse, he has done that before. And I think I like Brody. However, let me talk about my favorite. And that's Swipe, because he's real cute. Um, Swipe was second to Nyquist last time out. He was trying to come up the rail with a really nice rail move. He was so brave. He was going to go through. And then Nyquist kind of came over on him a little bit, and he backed out of there. I think he almost had the measure of him. They did take a look at the race. Three times he ran behind Nyquist in his last three starts. So he's going to beat him this time. Four times the charm. Uh, Nyquist undefeated, you know, he's going to go into this race the favorite, and the question will be for him, you know, just running over a new track, new place in, at Keeneland, but uh, he, he'll be the favorite. I don't think you could leave him out, but I'm picking against him just because I'm mad at him for coming over on my boy Swipe in the last race. Go ahead. I'm next on this one. <laughs> this is um, one of the m more competitive juveniles that I've seen in a while. It's a great betting race. Um, because there's just a race is loaded with talent and I think it's about trip and um, I'm not really sure how the how the pace scenario was set up I really like exaggerator second in the breeders futurity um, you know um, he's been training here he can handle the distance I think he's ready to go period. all right and Ellis if they beat Greenpoint Crusader in the juvenile <laughs> you could knock me over with a feather a horse that's won in spite of breaking slowly and in spite of his greenness that has this tremendous breeding by Bernardini out of that tremendous mare, Ava Knows the Code, successful mission, key to entry, Justin Phillip, all those stakes winners in his pedigree. He's going to run so much better in his first time going two turns, and he's already got the best Echo Bay speed figure and the pattern for improvement. Greenpoint Crusader, strongly for me as a win bet. I'll look at Exaggerator on Bridal Outlaw and Brody's Cause to complete the Exactus and Trifecta. A couple of tidbits on two of those horses. Unbridled Outlaw did not want to get on the van yesterday. I was watching the Periscope periscope stream from Romans Racing, and uh, they had a really hard time getting on, him on the van to ship here, so take that how you will. The other thing on Greenpoint Crusader, we we're on the backside this morning waiting for American Pharaoh and his connections walked past and one of the guys said, 
that, that scrummer on the barn, that's going to be me next year. He said, you may not be talking about me right now. He said, but you come to the Kentucky Derby and I'm going to have to put up some barricades. So <laughs> <laughs> that camp is definitely confident in their horse's ability. Whether he wins the race or not, we will see. But as always, you can follow us on Blood Horse for continued updates for the recaps of the races to find out what's going on. Follow all of us on Twitter. Maybe I'll learn how to pronounce some of the horse's names before Friday and Saturday. And we always want to thank Equibase for sponsoring. And thank you for watching that handicapping show.